Hey, y'all. Hey, what's up, y'all? Happy Wednesday. It's your girl, A. We came to talk shit today. What's up, y'all? What's up, divas? What's up, divos? What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It is Real Talk Wednesday. Grab you something to drink. Y'all already know what I'm going to tell y'all to drink on. Some good old-fashioned water. I forgot to take my blood pressure pill, but I'll take it in a second. Yes, happy Wednesday. Hope y'all are having like a really great day when you're watching this, girl, okay? Hope y'all are having like a really great day. It's Wednesday. Y'all already know what we do on Wednesday. We chit-chat. We talk mess. We read emails. We give people advice or opinions, not even advice, but opinions, because I don't want to give anybody advice. That's not my thing. I'm not like a therapist, um, but I will give you my honest, unbiased opinion of what I would do. And you just take it as a grain of salt. Okay. Like what I would do may not be what you would do and what you would do probably definitely wouldn't be what I would do, but we're here to talk about it. We're here to share products that we like to use all that cool stuff. And then some, okay. So I hope you all are having like a really great day. You know, it's already Monday. Um, when I'm filming this, I got to get it edited and ready for you guys. Okay. Um, the weekend was amazing for me, um, especially for Mumsy. You know, this was prom weekend and she had like a blast. She looked so beautiful. Like literally she looked so beautiful and I'll definitely instill a pic in this, but I really wanted to wait for the actual vlog, but you know, that will not go up for like another week. And I just couldn't wait because you guys were wanting to know what she looked like. So I just couldn't keep it from you guys. You know, you all are part of the family. You guys have watched Mumsy literally grow up on YouTube. Like when I read the comments on my Instagram, Instagram regarding Mumsy and her prom dress. Um, for those of you guys who didn't see it, I was like, I was behooved. I was in awe because so many of you guys have watched her grow from like, I think it was like nine months old when we came to YouTube. And where we started out was in New York. You know, I'm born and raised in Queens, New York. Um, but we lived upstate New York at the time. And, um, you know, I started YouTube just to have something to do. But never really thought it was going to be this long of a time frame on YouTube. It's been over 16 years, three channels. Um, and I just am amazed and by the comments, like, you know, there was people saying, well, I remember when she used to bust in the bathroom, when you was doing your wig tutorials, like it was just amazing to be able to read these comments and also to be able to share my life, our lives with you guys. So I'm just like, I was in awe and I felt so like proud of her and just proud to be here so i definitely wanted to show you guys her picture she just looks so beautiful she said she had a great time at the prom the only thing was okay so you know back in the day when we was going to prom we'd have prom at our high school you know it would be a theme they would make the gym gymnasium look really really nice deck it out you know it would be a theme well i guess it i don't know if all schools do that anymore but here in arizona they definitely don't so this year they had the prom at the Science Center Museum or whatever. And they invited three schools to do their prom at the same time. Now, granted, they weren't all in the same room. They were in separate areas. But Mumsy was like, the room was small and it was no AC. It was hot. She said she sweated 10 times more than she would have sweat in regular days. Like, it was really hot. You know what I'm saying? But she still had a great time. Her and her friends, they went to IHOP after. And then she came home. She was home, like, I think maybe like 1230 or whatever. Prom was over at 11. So like 1230, 1 o'clock, she, she was back home. Girl, she was out. She was like literally partying. And um, we just had like a really great time. I did her wig. I did um, glue her lace front wig on. And I think I did a damn good job. Um, you know, I ate left no crumbs, baby. Tati did her makeup. She definitely ate and left no crumbs. Mumsy's dress. Everything was so well put together. And I was so happy. Like, you know what I'm saying? We are family and we always like band together, if that's the right word, to make sure that one of us is looking great for whatever the occasion is. So, you know what I'm saying? We made sure Mumsy was right, okay? And I love the fact that, you know what? My daughter Tati is an amazing daughter because she will make sure that Mumsy is always okay, especially Mumsy, even Nate, my daughter Nate too. But Mumsy is the baby. So she bought Mumsy's prom dress. She bought her prom ticket. She got her lashes professionally done. Like she does things for Mumsy. And I just, I, I'm just so grateful to my daughter Tati. I be jokingly, I be saying, you know what? You my baby daddy, you are. Mumsy's baby daddy like this is what I be saying to her because she does things like for her that her father should be doing but he's neither here nor there but I'm just so grateful for my daughter Tati that she can help me hold my household down like I'm, I'm very grateful to her and um she made her makeup look so amazing and she just got so much patience because Mumsy don't be having patience but Mumsy had a great time now let me tell you the Thursday before prom I had to wash her hair we had to take out her little faux locks or faux twist and um her crochet twist and I had to wash her hair I um, helped her take it out we washed it Thursday I braided it I, you know I blow dried it pressed it out put some cornrows in it and she wore a uh, headband wig the next day Friday to school she 
wore a Yaki Stray headband wig by RPG Show. Everybody was like amazed at that look. She loved it. She loved it. She loved it. Now today she also has another headband wig on. But I said to her, because she said she would wear a lace front wig to school every day next year. I guess she changed her mind about the whole lace front wig install. She said it's just too much. She does not like wearing lace fronts, but she likes some headband wigs. So she just had like a really, really great time. I wanted to share this with you guys because I've, I've shared this in another video with you guys prior. Why does my lashes look wonky today? Um, I guess it's time to get a new pair on. Well, I could just clean them off. Um, but I've done a video on this, this candle company called Goose Creek, okay? Now, mind you, the last video, the first video that I did showcase them, I only did one video. Uh, someone said I got the shit for free. First of all, I didn't get nothing for free. I wish I would have gotten stuff for free, okay? But anyway, neither here nor there. Goose Creek reminds me so much of Bath & Body Works, but they're not. Their candles are the same. They smell the same. Three-wick candles, but they always got a sale. Six candles, six three-wick candles for $60. You cannot beat that. So I did buy some last week or the week and a half ago, and I bought about 14 of them i wanted to buy the collection of strawberry shortcake and care bears okay now mind you like i said they had a sale so definitely they probably have another sale going on because i did get another text message and i wanted to share that with you guys about their sale i'm just going to show you a couple of candles i'm not going to show you a lot because this is not a review but i will say that i really do love goose creek candles and if you are not like familiar with them get with the program they look aesthetic they are aesthetically pleasing they smell so good and they do remind you of bath and body works but they're not they don't have a lot of I think they have one store that's mainly done online. This is a family owned business and they have like lots of different collections. Plus they have like, you know, the main ones. They just have great sales all the time. They will have you going broke. But the cool thing about it is you can use either Afterpay, which I like to use, or you can use a firm so you don't have to pay all at once because I love places that I don't have to pay all at one time. So that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? So I did get some candles and I'm going to just show you on the side, but I wanted to show you a couple of them. So like I said, I got 14. I'm not going to show you all of them because this is not what this is about. Now they would definitely remind you of of a Bath and Body Works candle, correct, right? So let's see if I could put it right here. Okay, so because I have, where well, I have my screen, this is the Strawberry Shortcake, and this one is called Huckleberry Pie. You know what I mean? Huckleberry Pie, and a really, really a cute candle, smells good. You know, definitely was $10. You know, I did purchase, like I said, 14 of them, um, and they just remind me a lot of Bath and Body Works, but definitely way better. And I do apologize about the blur on it. It's the, it's the camera lens that I have on my phone. Um, um, but yeah, so this is the strawberry shortcake one. This one is the Care Bears one. And this one is called Care Bears, Rainbow Sherbert. Okay, Rainbow Sherbert. So this is the Care Bear one. And they're just like, they're just three wick candles. So if you want to try them out, try them out, y'all, because they definitely have a sale going on right now. I believe it is today because I did get another text message girl I signed up for text messages and I shouldn't have did that right this is another Care Bear one this is Wish Big but I loved Care Bears and Strawberry Shortcake as a kid growing up girl those are my favorites so yeah definitely check out Goose Creek because they have like some amazing collections they have the Peter Rabbit collection they have the Strawberry Shortcake collection um they have the uh Debbie Cakes collection they have Elf collection I know I'm missing something else but they also have just regulars that are not part of a collection this is another Strawberry Shortcake one this I think is going to be my favorite because this is called Cafe Olay and I love stuff that smells like coffee it reminds me of the cafe one that is sold at bath and body works this one is the strawberry shortcake apricot one and girl who was a fan smells so good who was a fan of strawberry shortcake growing up like my favorite one is orange blossom of course because she's an african-american like myself so why not right here's orange blossom right here and this one smells amazing this one smells so good. This is called Orange Blossom, okay? So I just wanted to show you guys some of them. Check out Goose Creek. The first time that I purchased from them, I did use the... Well, I did purchase twice, actually. The second time I purchased from them was, which was in my last vlog, I used the Afterpay. I didn't really buy many candles. I think I probably bought, like, maybe, like, eight. Um, And I bought all of the um Christmas candles because it was, like, six bucks. So, and I don't care about the scent. Well, I do care about the scent, but I love stronger scented candles. So I used the Afterpay the first time. And this particular find, for some reason, the Afterpay was not popping up, but it was still being advertised on the website so i ended up using the affirm check out goose creek i will link it below I'd like to show you guys things that i care a lot about also i care about these shirts like damn much i really really do these are from target this is by the brand called goodfellow and company these are in the men's section so if you love good t-shirts like this is no way in comparison to Hanes or fruit of the loom i find that these are a million times way better the stretch of these are amazing because it snaps back quality of these are amazing this is a size large that i got on you can get them in crew neck if you choose it comes in like several different colors not a lot of colors but if you love good white t-shirts or black t-shirts or navy blue or gray they have these and it comes in a four pack for $17.98 in my area you know each area is different but if you are looking for good white t-shirts 
dollars for yourself or for your man or your kids get the goodfellas brand from target um i love these these are really really good quality t-shirts of way better than anything that hanes and fruit of the looms would sell and i noticed that hanes and fruit of the looms are much much more pricier okay now this video is also being sponsored which i'm very very excited about and i wanted to wait to the very end to show this but we're going to do this now because girl i love a good sponsor especially when it's something that you can use so mind you first of all they are giving me a discount of 30 percent off and they are available on amazon and also i did notice while on amazon there's also a coupon you can clip too so it seems like you're getting more off of this particular product now this is a mobile photo printer okay which i am loving and i will definitely post the company below which is the hprt this thing is easy i was kind of like putting it off for a day because i'm like i don't know if this is really going to work out for me i don't know if i'm going to be able to to do this but girl let me tell y'all anybody could do this my grandson who's nine could do this all you have to do basically is make sure you have your mobile phone android or ios doesn't matter go ahead and scan the barcode on the box there's also a barcode inside of the pamphlet and this is super duper easy if you have pictures on your phone don't want to print them all out or you just need something printed out really really quick you can use this you can use this for passports for fun whatever you can do a lot of different things with it it also comes with ink and the printing paper and it prints four by six photos which is great here's a photo that i actually printed of pancake my dog okay and you can do all different type of edits and such with the photo printer I also printed one of mumsy in her prom dress as well so very good quality ink and you can also buy refills if you need new printing paper or new printing ink and they also have other gadgets too but this is the pamphlet this was so easy to follow and look at this little this is like the best gadget I also printed out a picture of us at lunch me mumsy tati and tinky for tati's birthday and this is tati and tinky right here girl i was having a field day with this printer so easy to use but it's super small, so you could definitely carry it along with you. You know, it's easy to store. All you got to do is plug this in. This is where your ink cartridge goes on the side when you need to refill it. All you got to do is just pop that up, pull it out, and it will give you the instructions of where and which way to place it in when you need to replace it. You'll hear a click. Super easy. In the back is where you would put the adapter at right here. And if you see this little slot, this is where the picture will go in and out while it is actually performing its duties. And it will slide out right here through the front. This is where you would power it on. OK, and there's a little power button right here. And this little top is what you would take off. This is where the paper is at. Also, this is glossy print paper. Make sure you don't put your fingerprints on it. And it also has a little stand, so that way once you connect it to this right here in the front, you'll hear it click in. The paper will go, once you hit the button for it to print, it will go in and then it will come back out and then it will go in and then it will come back out and then it will go in and it will come back out. It will do this a performance of three times and then your picture is done. I love this device. This is super easy to use. Make sure you check them out on Amazon. These are great to give as gifts if you need one for yourself. This takes no room at all. And also, if you don't need a photo printer, they also do have other printers like scanners and such. If you need documents to be printed, they also have very small ones to take with you. I I love stuff that's small. It's on the go. It doesn't take up a lot of space. The funny thing is, though, I've had a printer here at my house. It's a Canon. And I've had that printer for like, I want to say like seven years, brand new, used it once and could not figure out how the life of me to actually program it. So when I do print out pictures, I'll just go to Walgreens or stuff like that. But being that I have this now, it's super easy. I'm not really sure how many times you can print paper or pictures rather with this before your ink runs out but the ink is very inexpensive you can get two cartridges i do believe and paper for like 24 dollars. so take advantage of this you guys this is by the company hprt photo printing mobility okay i love this and like i said they have other little things that you can use like label printers which i think are really cool if i had a label printer i'm pretty sure i'd probably label up every damn thing in this house tati has one okay and she's lucky i didn't get my hands on it but they also do sell those on their website page on amazon they also have printers, scanners, all kind of little mobile things that you could take with you for super duper inexpensive. And like I said, you will get a exclusive 30% off coupon code, which I will link for you guys down below. And like I said, last night, I seen there was a coupon also included. So I just tried it out. I clipped the coupon and I redeemed the 30% off code. And girl, this went from $114 to $60. Super duper inexpensive. And it'll show you your savings. So check them out. And like I said, it's super easy to hook up. All you need is your mobile 
mobile device and you can scan the QR code if you want to. Easy, a child can do this. So I will link everything down below for HPRT and their mobile photo uh, printer. This is so cute. I think it's really cute. I love little cute stuff like this and really easy to put back together. All you gotta do is fold like this. You can leave the paper in this. It comes with paper and the ink already with this kit. So you don't have to buy anything extra and you just put it back on top and there you go. That's it. You can do Wi-Fi connect printing, Bluetooth printing. I think mine's was, I did mine through Bluetooth through my phone and it's a really easy app. The app is super fun. Like I said, you can do edits, you can do collages, you can do fun printing, you can do all different types of things. So I will link them down below for you guys. Huh. So when this video goes up, it will definitely be on a Wednesday and the next day I will be leaving to go to California to drop my son off into custody um, in San Diego, which is a five and a half hour drive. Unfortunately, I'll have to drive back alone because he is turning himself in. And you know, you know how you just try to be strong and you just, I think like my, um, it, it's, it's not really that I'm angry, but I'm very disappointed and hurt within him and what he did. And I just was thinking about it this morning. And you know, when you hear songs on the radio and they're slow and you start thinking about the, like whatever situation you got going through or you're going through, it just bothers you even more. Girl, and I, and I, and I swore to myself that I was going to be okay when I went Thursday to, you know, go with him to court so he can turn himself in. But I don't know. I, I want to be okay because I know that I'm going to have to drive back by myself. But this morning I was in tears and I was trying to fight back the tears because, girl, you know, I don't want my lashes to come off. It's early in the morning and I don't want my grandkids seeing me like that because I don't want them to have a bad day. And I just really try to be strong. But more or less, I'm very hurt and I'm disappointed. And I just really like, I just really need him to do the right thing. You're not only leaving your mother, but your kids and your, your lady. And it's just very disheartening to me. And, you know, my son has never been in any type of prison situation. And though he's a grown ass man and he could fend for himself and he could fight for himself, it's not something that I would really want to see him go and do. You understand what I'm saying? And it bothers me and it hurts me a lot. And I really thought that I was going to be OK. And after this morning and even a couple of nights ago, I had like a little bit of a breakdown and anxiety and I had to switch the channel because I was watching things on TV and I watched a show called Lockdown and I really had to turn it off because I started thinking about my son and I just started thinking of the situation and I started thinking about how long he had to do and it just started bothering me like you don't want your children, nobody wants their children to be in a situation where they have to go away for a certain amount of time. Nobody wants their kids to go through that, especially when they are in their ripe ages of 31 years old. Like, come on, man. And it just really bothered me a lot. And I just, I just, I'm praying to God that when this is over on Thursday morning, like court is at 930, I just hope that I'm able to focus and be strong enough to drive back home. Like I'm, I'm going to drive back home, but what a, a journey. That's a long drive, five and a half hours, but I don't want to be so like in tears on the way home. I really wish that I could bring someone with me, but unfortunately, you know, I don't have too many friends and my kids, you know, school, work, so there's really no one I could bring. And his lady, of course, she's not gonna be able to come because she's pregnant, plus who's gonna keep the kids? And then that's another thing, because of this whole entire situation, I am now going to be the babysitter, okay? Because my son did work nights and she worked mornings, so he would keep the baby, not, well, he's not a baby, he's four. Is Julian four? He's five, excuse me. He would keep Julian during the day. Well, he would be with Julian during the day. And their other son, who is three, he is autistic. So he would go to a program for three hours a day until 10 a.m. So then he would get him off the bus while his lady was at work. So she worked days, he worked nights. So that was able, that was how they was able to not have to do day daycare. So I'm going to have to be able to do all these things while she's at work, while I'm trying to do my own business until daycare comes through. <sighs> That's a lot for me because I really don't babysit. You know, I do babysit, but I do have my own things to do. But I have to be there for my daughter-in-law and my grandkids and my son. So it's a it, this is challenging for me. And I'm just, sometimes I feel like I'm very overwhelmed. So I just ask you guys to keep me in your prayers. Pray for me, for my safe journey there and back and just for my well-being mentally. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Also, thank you everyone for the baby registry gifts. I will link the baby registry down below for my sixth grandkid. Please, if you can donate, there's nothing too expensive on it. Buy a box of wipes, buy a box of diapers, nothing too expensive. That's not how I would do you guys, but I want to say thank you so much for those who have donated for my sixth grandson, which my daughter-in-law is pregnant now and the baby's due in June, June 5th. So let's 
see when this happens so that way we can do the virtual baby shower and we can get things going but yes i want to say thank you to everyone who's donated um i'm just so shocked and happy just feel so much support and love from you guys so i want to thank you all for that because i don't know what i would do without you guys like literally and seriously i don't know what i would do without you guys so thank you so much for everyone who has donated i don't care if it was one little thing cheap little thing in a budget friendly little thing we shouldn't call it cheap but you know i'm a cheapster okay i'm a cheapster but i thank you all sincerely from my heart and my family we thank you all um very very appreciative like can't say it enough thank you so much um and i will link the baby baby registry down below if you guys haven't please take a look at it if you can i would really appreciate it if you could donate to the baby shower now i don't want to hold you guys because i've already held y'all so let's get into this real talk okay yes So, you know, so funny, so weird. Like I go on this app studio, YouTube studio to answer like comments and stuff. And so I'm reading these comments on one of my recent Sheen videos. Okay. Sheen wig videos. And, you know, normally I will look at the profile, the icon profile next to it after, um, you know, what I'm saying I've read the comments. So I'm reading this comment and it's like, I'm so sorry. I still love you. I'm like, what? Who the fuck is this? <sighs> Why is he leaving comments on my videos now? It's annoying. It's very annoying. I answered every single comment back except for that one. Okay. I just left it there. All right. I really wanted to write, do not embarrass yourself anymore. Stop embarrassing yourself and me. Just please stop. But I thought I would share that with y'all. Okay. Y'all go find it. It's on my recent Sheen wig video. Okay. With the brassy, not the brassy, with the gingery red hair. Y'all see an unanswered comment. There's probably a couple unanswered comments by now. Maybe like 10, 5 or whatever, but his is there. Okay. Y'all see it. But anyway, so if you want a real talk about you, you can go ahead and send me an email to Muffin Is My Lovers at Muffin Is My Lovers 2012 at gmail.com. And please put in the subject line real talk. Or you also can use my real talk one, which is April's Real Talk at gmail.com. Please also put in the subject line real talk. If you have already changed the names of the people that you are talking about in this email, please go ahead and let me know. If you want me to do the name changing, please go ahead and let me know. If you don't, please go ahead and let me know. Either way, girl, please go ahead and let me know. Okay, so let's see here. Here we go. Hi, April. All names listed have already been changed, so you can read this freely. All right. I was raised by my grandmother who passed away when I was in my early 20s. This caused all of my friend's mothers to step up attempting to fill her shoes. My best friend's mother has taken that role in full capacity for over 13 years. I also bridged a gap in the ages of her children, also known as my siblings. I purchased my first home seven years ago, so I know the process is stressful and the bank keeps close eye on every dollar you spend under contract and the smallest thing can cause the deal to go south. My best friend's mother, Wanda, went under contract for a home and had shaky credit, but was working three jobs to reach her goals. While under contract, her car needed to be repaired. The work was $2,500. She under no circumstances could pull $2,500 out of her bank account while under contract with the bank. So she asked me to loan her the money until she closes on the house. Now, April, I work for a loan company. So of course I put in writing that she has to pay me back $2,500 after the closing of her home. At this time, she showed me her bank account she had 14K saved up. Her closing cost was scheduled to be about 11,000 and she was still working and getting paid weekly. So I wasn't worried. Fast forward, Wanda was under contract for four months and closed right before Christmas in 2023. At this time, she had 21K saved up. On closing day, I met up with her and she said, oh, I can pay you back, but not all of the money because I don't have it on my Apple Pay. So I can send you $200 now and I'll give you the rest later. April later has come Come and went. This woman has brought a brand new suite of LG bespoke appliances, K painters, 
and all type of contractors to do work in her new home. All the while has not given me anything outside of $200. My best friend knows nothing about the money her mother borrowed. And I'm just like, should I tell Stephanie that her mom won't give me my money back? And would I be wrong for taking this signed piece of paper to small claims court to get my money back? be a wage garnishment. I'm struggling so bad with this because my best friend's family are kind of all I have and they really looked out for me in my 20s. When it comes to money, I'm not going to say I'm rich, but I'm about $11 over the poverty level, but I still want my money back. I've reminded her multiple times, any advice will be appreciated. So she gave me no name for herself, I don't think. So Stephanie is her best friend and Stephanie's mom's name is Wanda, which is also a mom-like figure to herself. Now she gave me no name to call her, so we're just going to call her... We'll call her Candace, okay? So Candace wrote me, as you guys can see, but I'll tell y'all about family. Mm -hmm. Now she isn't blood related to Candace. Wanda isn't blood related to Candace, but Wanda did take on the role to help raise her and help be there for her. Now Stephanie is also Wanda's daughter, which is Candace's best friend. Now I get it. I've heard this a lot of times in the past. Um, I've heard this when people are ready to buy homes, they cannot be withdrawing money from their bank accounts or their credit cards or what have you, or making large purchases because the bank is looking at this. And my thing is this: Damn, what if you really do need to? repair something like a hot water tank in your old home or your car, whatever, emergency, what do you do in this type of circumstance if you under contract with a bank and you can't like make any large purchases for like a certain amount of time frame? But I've heard this. So crazy thing is Candace works for a loan company. So Wanda needed her car fixed. She was under contract for the bank to purchase her first home. Now, mind you, she already had $14,000 saved up. That's a, that's a decent amount of money. But at the time she was under contract and she needed to repair her car, which was $2,500. $2,500 is a lot to repair a car and it's a lot to loan some fucking body, okay? But Candace did the smart thing. She put it in writing. Once you finish closing on the house, I'm going to need my money back, which is rightfully right, okay? Decent. This lady worked three jobs to save up this money to purchase this house. Kudos to her. Now here it comes. You done went ahead. You purchased your home. You closed your deal. By the time you closed your deal, you had $21,000 saved up. That's even more money. Even more. All she needed to pay down was $11,000 for the closing cost. So you got roughly $10,000 left. You got 10 G's left to spend and spare and hold on to. You would think like 10 G's is not a lot, but to some people it really is. But when you owe somebody money that's helped you out and handed it out to you, you need to make good on your promises. And you also need to make good on that paper that you signed. Now here it is. She done closed the cost. She done made her closing cost of $11,000. And she did tell Candace, Wanda did tell Candace, I will pay you the remaining balance at a later date. She gave her the $200 which she had on her Apple Pay. Now I'm sorry, but if you owe me $2,500, and you only give me $200 as part of the payment, I'm going to be pissed the fuck off. Like, straight up. Because that ain't even no fucking teardrop, no bucket, no tear, no bucket, in, no tear in the bucket. $2,500 and all you gave me back was $200 that you had on your Apple Pay? Bitch, I don't really give a fuck about what you got on your Apple Pay. What you got on your bank account is what I'm trying to get. And let's not sit here and act like you don't know how to pull money from your bank account and put it on your Apple Pay because that's what people the fuck do. Okay? That's how we do it. So you gave this lady back, Wanda gave Candace back $200 out of $2,500 she owed her and still has yet to pay the fucking money back. You still owe $2,300. This lady done went out and got new LG appliances for her home. She done paid painters. She done did extra shit that she could have got money from the bank to loan her to improve her home. Either way, it's no excuse. I'm going to need my money back. Now, the one crazy thing about this is Stephanie and Candace are best friends. Now, remember, Candace is the um, is the best friend of Stephanie, who is the Stephanie is the daughter of Wanda, who is the one who needed the money loaned to her. Now, Candace, I understand that Wanda was like a mother to you or a mother figure or a parental figure to you. I can't even say mother to you because she didn't share that, but she did step in. Now, when you loan somebody money, I don't care how much it is. You do need to get in it right. Now, if it's $10, then I can understand it's no big deal, but $2,500 is a lot. Candace is best friends with Wanda's daughter, Stephanie, and Stephanie has no idea of what went down. Stephanie does not know that her bestie, Candace, has loaned her mama $2,500 and has only paid her back two of it, 200 of it, and she has messaged her ample enough times and ain't got no money and ain't got no response, and now she wonders, should she take this to small claims court? Listen, let me tell you something. This be the problem with people. They let money interfere with their relationships. And I'm not saying Candace is no way in the wrong at all. It's Wanda. And it's unfortunate because she's fighting and struggling with what she should do. I'm pretty sure she doesn't want to lose her friendship to Stephanie. And she also says they've been there for her since she was in her 20s. And they are like family to her. But family will do it to you. It's one thing if you say, I'm going to give you the money. 
but you did not say I'm going to give you the money. You held her responsible. She said she held herself responsible. She signed that paper for the loan from you and she did promise you to pay you back once her closing cost was closed off. This was a promissory note and it was signed, which means you are you are liable for it. You are responsible for the payment of this. $200 is just a drop in the fucking pit of what is owed. I'd be damned if a motherfucker owed me $2,500 and only tried to give me $200 and then you wasn't answering my fucking messages. Listen, let me tell you something. That is your best friend's mother. However, this has nothing to do with you and your best friend. Now, there are so many different ways that you can take this. You know what I'm saying? Maybe if it was me, I would I would sit down with my best friend. At this point, I probably would sit down with my best friend because this is my best friend. This is what I would first do. And this is just in my opinion. They've been there for you since you've been a fan, since, since your mother passed. They are family to you. I can't say if they are like family or they are. Sometimes saying they are like family to you may not be as important as they are family to me. So either way, they've been there for you for the longest. And Stephanie is your best friend. Stephanie does not know of the situation. She's not aware. What I would do, this is just me. This is what I would do. I would go to my best friend. I would definitely have a, a talk with my best friend. This is what I would do. You know what I'm saying? Some people might not agree, but I just feel like it would be in my best interest to first go to my best friend and talk with her and let her know what I did to try to help out and that I've been trying to contact her mom and I've been trying to get them the amount of money owed to me back. Maybe your best friend can talk to her own mother about the situation and in hopes that she can clarify things and she can get everything resolved. If that doesn't work, unfortunately, you're going to have to take the other route respectfully and you're going to have to take her to small claims. Now, the one thing that I'm hoping that doesn't happen is I hope that you and your best friend do not break the friendship, do not break the familyhood that you have going on in regards to the situation. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes money will do it for people. Sometimes people feel like, well, you owe me or we've been there for you since day one. So in reality, we really don't have to give this back to you. Why are you coming at me so hard over money that I owe you when I've been down for you since day one? This is how some people think. And it's unfortunately, but grown people do think this way. And I feel like when you're at a certain age, bitch, you need to think the right way. You need to think what you freaking sign. You need to think about how you handle the situation. And so as a grown up, as a grown up, she's already tried to talk to Wanda about giving me my money back. Wanda's already said I'm going to give it back to you at a later date or a later time because I only got $200 on this Apple Pay. Like I would said, um, bank account, you can you can put all, pull over some money to that Apple Pay because I'm going to need $2,500. Now, Candace this, day, Candace, this date, she's $11 over the poverty li limit. That's not a lot. Okay, $11 ain't shit. That means that she's still broke, broke too. Okay, so she definitely gonna need her $2,500. Listen, Candace, I would talk to my bestie first. That's what I would first do. And let her know the situation in hopes that she can help resolve the issue with you or for you with her mom. That's what I would do. That's what I would do if I was in your shoes. I would go ahead. I would talk to Stephanie, my bestie, Wanda's daughter, and I would explain the situation to her. You can take her out for lunch or maybe not, okay? Because like she said, she need her money back. So y'all could sit down, invite her over, have a glass of wine, or maybe, maybe not. Sometimes people have too much alcohol in the systems and things take off from there. Things that we don't really want taken off, like verbal altercations. So maybe if you guys meet in a public setting, and have a talk with your best friend about the situation, how you helped your mother out. Bring the letter with you so that way you can show her. Show her the text messages regarding the $200 and at the later date. Show her the text messages that you have texted Wanda and you have gotten no reply, no response, and no resolve on the situation. And that you are in need of your money because you do not want to take her to small claims court. If you do not get any type of resolve regarding the situation after you have spoken to Stephanie, then unfortunately what you're going to have to do is take it to small claims court. Now, if they really can't Care about you and they're really family to you then she'll pay you back before it even goes into small claims court if she do have to bring her to small claims court and then there's any type of altercation regarding that then unfortunately you're going to have to step away from the toxic unhealthy environment now i understand that they have been there for you since your mother has passed away and that's a beautiful blessing but we also have to realize that we are all adults here and we have signed contracts for one another we have signed a contract with the bank that you have went and you have finished and you also signed a contract with myself that you have not finished that you have yet to finish and it's unfortunate when we have to take people to small claims court because we didn't already got documents and then they feel like because i know you or we family or we best friends or we like friends or we like family that oh, okay i can just pussyfoot around and give you your shit back when the fuck i feel like giving it back to you it doesn't work like that in the real world because had you got this loan from like a bank or somewhere and if you don't pay them back their money in time or a car place they're gonna repo your shit okay that's what the fuck is gonna happen if you don't fucking fall through and y'all don't get this resolved and i guess you're gonna have to repo that money from her in small claims court this is what i would do this is this is how i would handle it you know i understand people go through shit financial hardship but why are you paying for somebody else's fucking car repair like in reality like if she's not giving you your money back you pay for her car repair 
Why are you paying for her car repair? She gave you $200. What the hell is $200 towards $2,500? Like, what is that? That's the labor? That ain't even probably the labor on the car, okay? Because some places charge you like $100 to $120 of labor, depending on the size of the car. So who knows what was wrong with the car, but $200 versus $2,500 is nothing but a, bu a drop in the bucket, like a little tiny drop. Bitch, I'm still dehydrated from that little ass drop in the bucket. So I would definitely talk to Stephanie, and if Stephanie couldn't help me resolve it, then guess what? I guess we're going to small claim court and i do hope and pray that because of the small claims court or the situation at hand that y'all don't get any type of altercations but just know this some people feel like they can benefit off of you and some people feel entitled because they felt like because we're like family or we are family that it shouldn't matter to you now nah, you give me my motherfucking money back you sign this paper then it matters to me and when you sign this paper it matters to you so therefore i'm gonna need you to come through and give me my damn money back twenty three hundred dollars she lucky you don't put interest on that shit i'm just saying a bitch like me will put interest on it and if you don't pay me my money back in time you can best believe there will never be another loan in a conversation because i will bring your ass to small claims court if you don't answer a certain amount of messages that just right there lets me know that you revoked your whole contract like some people wouldn't even take it to the point where i'm gonna go talk to my best friend about the situation i'm gonna just take her ass to family court or excuse me to court but i just try to hold together the bond that she has with stephanie and wanda as her family you know what i'm saying i'm trying to hold that bond together and also give them respect and grace like maybe you know what i'm saying she just had a lot of going on she just didn't couldn't get back to her in time maybe she felt shameful that she couldn't respond to her sometimes people do feel shameful of the fact that they can't pay you back and they just try to ignore you either way that's not a good thing and we do need to communicate with one another especially if we're adults and we signed a contract so yes candace i would definitely go ahead and speak to stephanie first about this in a public setting because when it seems like you in private with people sometimes some people get a little bit out of hand they get a little bit mouthy yeah granted some people get mouthy in public too but if you feel like the situation of talking to stephanie is, is taken out of content or it's getting a little bit out of hand then you know what you do you remove yourself from the situation and you just go and do what you need to do best which would be to file a claim in small court so start off with trying to talk to the daughter and if it starts getting out of hand and you see this is not going anywhere then remove yourself from the situation and just go ahead to small claims court and get your money back shit twenty five hundred dollars is not fucking small okay it's definitely a lot but just make sure that you have all your proof when speaking with the daughter and when you go to small claims court if you need be. I'm sorry, but people be just really trying to take over other people's bank accounts and money situations. And it sucks. It sucks that you have to loan people money, grown adults. And I understand the whole contract thing with the bank and how they're not supposed to like make big purchases while under contract for closing of a home. That sucks because sometimes emergency situations do come up. And then you here you are. You got to fall on a rely on somebody else to help you out during that time. Girl, listen, let me tell you something. It's a beautiful thing when you can afford to buy a new home, but sometimes the steps that you go through are hell. But when you can get through it, then God willing, you get through it. But when you owe people money and you sign contracts, then you need to do the right thing. And you need to, you know what I'm saying, do right with that loan, regardless of where the fuck it came from, period. So let Candace know what you guys would do in the comments below. <sighs> Did I tell y'all we got two for today? Because I, if I didn't, I'm going to tell y'all now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like, I don't know. I, don't, I, I just really don't like loaning people money because of situations like this. And you know, I've already had this situation with my son. And unfortunately, he didn't pay me back what was owed to me. And you know what? I just realized from that, I'm never going to loan you anything again. And it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Now he's going to go to prison and it's like, oh, he's going to need some type of commissary. Who's he going to call on? He could ask his lady, but she's going to have four kids being a single mother and she's already going to go through a lot. So all the money that she's making, she's going to need it to pay for her place, her bills and such. You know what I'm saying? So he really couldn't ask her like that. I'm going to be the one that's going to have to take the fall and be able to help him when I can which I'm more than willing to, but I just feel like certain situations you could avoid it and none of this shit could, y'all already know. <sighs> Let's get into the next real talk. So she titled this one, Horrible Mom. Hello, Miss April. How is life treating you? I pray all is well. Congratulations to having another grandchild. Wow, I cannot believe you're up to six already. And may I say congratulations to money, to Mumsy, excuse me, on her GPA. You have raised some beautiful, smart children. May God continue to bless you and your family. Thank you so much. I received that. You can call me Sherry for this video. I have some concerns here regarding a neighbor of mine. I normally like to mind my own business. You know, at a certain age, you learn to choose your battles wisely, along with minding the business that God has given you. I live in a small town in Pennsylvania. Nothing fancy, just country folk and good living. It's not that small to where everyone knows everyone, but it's small considered to where you were born and raised in New York City, or even where you currently reside at now, which is Arizona. I live in my own home, and next door to me is another house that is 
is a rentable home, has been for years, and I have seen my share of different neighbors. The landlord rents to people that have Section 8 or welfare, so you already know how that goes. People that are on Section 8 or any type of government subsidy never take care of the property that they live in. Shaking my head. Anyway, there is this family next door. She is a single mother and has six children stemming from the ages of probably 18 to 6 about. Not really sure as I don't talk with her much. I just know she leaves the kids home alone as well as seems like she is doing the children harm because I can hear the younger ones screaming at the top of their lungs saying things like, stop, stop, please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop, mama. I will see the children going to the bus stop looking unkept as if their clothes are not clean or fit properly. The younger girls' hairs need to be redone, combed, and washed from the looks of things. Sometimes I see them kids outside on their porch looking like they're hungry or in need of a bath. I have asked the children a few times have they eaten that particular day, and the one youngest who may be six or maybe five always tells me her mother doesn't feed them like that. Miss April, I really don't know what to think as I have gotten into somewhat an altercation with the mother in regards to all the yelling and the noise a few months back. I was told by the mother to mind my own business as what goes on in her home is none of my business. I am sure she leaves them kids alone as I have seen her get in her car and go hanging out. I mean, I suspect that this is what she's going to do as she was dressed to the max, looking all shiny and brand new. And I did not see anyone come in and tend to her children. Now, I never want to get anyone in any type of trouble or see a child without their parent. But I have called CPS once and they didn't seem like they did anything because all those children are still there. These kids are always on the porch when they ain't in school. They're on the porch. They look like they need to be bathed and fed. The backyard of their home needs to be clean as there are toys and garbage all in the back and it doesn't make the neighborhood look great. I'm not sure how to handle this as I don't want to be labeled a snitch, but I'm just tired of the constant noise, yelling, screaming, children looking dirty and hungry and being left alone. Am I wrong for feeling this way about this family? Am I taking it too far? Please help as I don't want these children to end up in the wrong hands. Thank you, Sherry. I'll be telling y'all in my messages when I be like at the end, like mind your business, stay out the way, stay safe, stay blessed. I'll be saying this to y'all. And so Sherry thinks that she mind her business. In a way, she is minding her business. In a way, she's really not minding her fucking business. First of all, let me just say this. Sherry, now I understand your thoughts on people that receive Section 8 or government subsidy. That that might be your opinion. That might be what has moved next door to you. And that's what you see. But not all people that's on Section 8 or any type of government subsidy housing live like that or ruly, unruly or disrespectful or don't take care of the property that they live on. Let me just say that, okay? How do I know this? Because let me say this, sweetheart. I've been one of those people. I've told and shared this with you guys on my channels prior to this channel that I was on Section 8. How the fuck you think that I got this house that I live in today? Now, mind you, I haven't had Section 8 in like 10 years, okay? Well, not 10 years, excuse me. I've lived here for 10 years. So I haven't had Section 8 for like eight years, okay? I, I'm off Section 8, but I was able to move here on Section 8. I was able to, to get this home on Section 8, and in no way have I ever mistreated this home. Not only this home, but the home that I came from in New York was never mistreated. Not people, not all people that are on Section 8 or any type of government subsidy housing live like slobs, okay? Let's just get that out there. Just because we may not be able to afford the, the nice homes or the rentals that we want to live in doesn't mean that we're slob or that we don't take care of shit. So let's get that frame of thought out the mind. Just because that's what you see in your neighborhood doesn't mean that all fucking people are like that. So please stop stereotyping people like that because when I read this, I felt like some type of insult was directed toward people that are on Section 8 or any type of government subsidy. And it wasn't insult. It's that you are unknown. It's that you are unaware. What you have living next door to you may be so, okay, or maybe it's overwhelming for her, but please don't label everybody that receives any type of government subsidy as slobs or don't know how to take care of the property they live in. Some people like myself are very grateful and appreciative of any type of help that we can get. And so we humble ourselves and we make sure that we take care of the property because we don't want to lose our home. We don't want to lose our place of residence. We don't want to lose the neighborhood that we're in. We don't want to lose the program that we're on. So yes, we take care of the things that we live in. We have, I don't know about you or the neighbors that you have around you, but me personally, who was on a Section 8 voucher and have been on Section 8 and haven't been on Section 8 for eight years, let me tell you something. If they was to offer me Section 8 right now, I'd be like, thank you very much. Yes, please. Okay. Okay? And I still would be able to pay my bills and be taking care of things. So not everybody that's on any type of government subsidy is a slob or is uncaring with the properties that they live in. Okay, that's for one. Now, I've seen some people that are, okay, those just ghetto ratchet ass people. And I'm not saying that they're because of their race, they're just ghetto and ratchet. I don't care what race you are. If you live in somebody else's dwelling, in somebody else's residence, and you do not take care of the place that's not yours, then you are ghetto and ratchet. And if it is yours and you're not taking care of it, 
you're still ghetto and ratchet because why would anybody want to live like a slob and have a home that's just dysfunctional so let's get that out the way sherry not everybody is like that now here's the thing this lady has six children i do believe and you really don't know the ages you're assuming that the ages are between 18 and six or five and all you do is you hear them yelling you see that they come outside unkept you see that she goes out and hangs out and you're not really aware if anybody is in there taking care of her kids because you did not see anybody come in and tend to her kids just because you did not see anybody come in and tend to her kids when she went to hang out doesn't mean that there wasn't anybody there also let's keep in mind if one of these kids are between the ages of 18 then they're old enough to watch their siblings okay that's that's number one and just because somebody looks hungry does not mean that they are hungry what I'm trying to figure out is, what is a hunger look? What is a hungry look? Because a bitch right now is hungry. Like, I'm fucking starving. Do I look hungry to you? Because I am. My stomach has sat here and growled several times, and I'm fucking hungry. But do I look hungry to you? Hmm. Now, I might look a little dehydrated and thirsty, of course, because I'm running my fucking mouth. Of course, I'm thirsty as hell, okay? But what is a hunger look? Now, these are children. You know, kids come in all different sizes. Some of them, they can eat. Kids have great metabolisms, okay? Let's just put that out there. And they can eat all day and be thin as a bone. I remember when I was one of those kids. Girl, I was one of those teens, too. My first baby, I was 102 pounds, okay? When I first, my first pregnancy, I was 102 pounds. With my son, I was 102 pounds. By the time I had him, I was, I gained like 50 something pounds. I think it was like 156 or something like that. After I had him, I lost that weight just like this. It went back to 100 and something pounds, okay? So it's got to do with the metabolism. Now, I wish my metabolism was like that right now because, girl, <laughs> anyway. But, Sherry, you really are not minding your business. And here's the thing. Don't nobody like being called. Um, don't nobody like CPS being called on him. Let's stop doing that shit to people because you don't really know what's going on. And if CPS didn't do anything, then nothing was going on. That's the problem with people. Y'all sometimes want to mind your business, but y'all really don't mind your business. Stop assuming that she doesn't have proper um, a babysitter when she's going and hanging out. She got a kid there. She's got a whole kid there. You know what I'm saying? Like she has a whole 18 year old child there who can watch her kid. And you don't even know if the child is 18, to be honest. This child could be older than that. You just assume. So this kid could be like 20. 21 you never ask the kids their age but what i wouldn't do if i was you sherry is keep asking her kids are they hungry did they eat that's not your business now if i was the mother that lived next door and you asked my kids did they eat does your mother feed y'all sweetheart i would be i would be knocking on your motherfucking door like straight up i would be knocking on your motherfucking door sherry i know this email is like are you doing the right thing or please help but um Straight up, if you were to ask any one of my family members that live with me, any one of my children that live with me, are they hungry? Did they eat today? Did your mother feed you? I'm knocking on your motherfucking door, okay? And that's where it's going to end up at. You either going to end up getting cussed the fuck out or you're going to end up getting cussed the fuck out. Now, like I said, I don't promote no violence. However, you kind of did cross the line, Sherry. How you going to ask somebody motherfucking kids did they eat? Like, who does that? Like, I mean... I mean, I could ask my grandkids did they eat, but that's the difference. How you gonna ask your neighbor's kids that you don't even fucking speak to, that you don't really even like, did they eat today? And we know that you really don't care for them too much because you just said all the noise, they look unkept, they look like they need a bath, they look like they need to be fed, they be screaming next door, you know what I'm saying? They go to the bus stop, their hair is not done, um, the mother goes and hangs out, she don't got a babysitter, you've already had an altercation with the mother due to the noise. So from that being said, we can already tell you really don't give two fucks for the family. You really don't care for them like that. And then when you overstep your boundaries by asking them, do you you eat have you ate and then the one younger child responds to you with our mother don't feed us like that we don't really know if that's true we don't know if that child is being sarcastic to you and basically in a nice way telling you to mind your fucking business we don't really know if that mother done told them children to just talk to you any old type of way because you're a nosy ass old bitch you know what i'm saying and i don't mean that no disrespectful way to you but calling cps on people because you don't like the noise and you don't like the way they feel like like you feel like they unkept or dirty or un unbathed you really don't know what's going on. And see, people's kids don't like shit like that. I know I don't like shit like that, okay? Let's stop calling CPS on people because we don't like them. Let's not do that. Let's just not fucking do that, okay? Let's stop assuming shit. Let's stop being nosy neighbors. It's one thing to be concerned because she did say she was concerned, but it's another thing when you be nosy. And then it's another thing when you're just trying to hit below the belt and you throwing people under the fucking bus, okay? And a way I felt like you hit below the belt and in another way I felt like you threw her under the bus because you up here talking about, oh, she ain't got no babysitter because I didn't see nobody coming. What the fuck do you do? Do you peep out the motherfucking window? 
window all day long? Do you sit on the porch all day long? Do you have anything to do? Do you have nothing to do? Do you have a hobby? Because here's the thing. If a motherfucker neighbor of mine said, well, I didn't see nobody coming to her house and babysit. Bitch, it wasn't your business to see anybody coming to my house and babysit for me. Since when do I have to take that up with you of anybody watching my motherfucking kids and who's coming into my house if I don't even know you and we're not even related and we don't even live in the same house? Bitch, I don't even speak to you like that. Okay? Let's stop being so nosy. Let's stop assuming. Because the word, first words of assume is ass. And who want to make an ass of themselves? I feel like you just made a, a serious ass of yourself right now, Sherry. I get it. There are children out here that need great parents and great homes. And some parents are not the best parents. She's a horrible mom. How can you say that when you really don't know her like that? You really haven't taken the time to get to know this woman. You just said you don't speak to her. The only time that y'all did speak to one another is when you guys had an altercation. And I don't really find that as a verbal conversation. I find that as an altercation. So you really didn't get to know her. And what's crazy is, if you don't speak to a person, why the fuck is you speaking to their children? That's a little bit weird to me, okay? It's definitely weird. Now, the kids, they look unkept. Maybe the mother is going through some things. Maybe the mother is overwhelmed. I'm pretty sure if they were unkept and hungry and so forth, I'm pretty sure not only would you have called CBS, but I'm pretty sure that school that they go to because they're getting on the school bus, I'm pretty sure that school would interfere because the schools, it is by law for the schools to report any type of child abuse or neglect to child protection services. So I'm pretty sure that the school would have called on the mother. Now, the part that gets me is, Sherry, you said CPS was called, but you don't think they did anything. CPS was called. How do you know when they went there? How do you know that they didn't do anything? This is the part that gets me. Are you really standing at the window peering through the blinds? Because I know people that do that, okay? Are you on the porch watching them, being nosy on the back porch, the front porch? What are you doing? How do you know the CPS went to her home? Maybe you did see them in passing. Maybe you did see them while you were standing outside or peering out the window, however you did see them, okay? But once they went into that home and behind closed doors, you don't know what the fuck happened, okay? You don't know what happened. You don't know. Unless you are not standing at the door 100% of the time, you really don't know what this woman's life is like. And what I say by standing at the door is being fucking nosy, and being nosy on your neighbor. If you're not there 100% of the time, then you really don't know what's going on. You really don't know if she has a babysitter in the house. You really don't know how old those children are. You said, what did she say? She assumes, okay? They they could be in the age range of bracket. What did she say? She has six children stemming from the ages of probably 18 to six about. Probably is not a fact. Probably is not a direct answer. Probably is not a 100% fact. Probably is, I don't fucking know. OK, stemming from OK, probably, probably is. I don't fucking know. That's what it is. You really don't know. You really don't know any of this. Stop calling CPS on people when you really don't know the situation. I get it. We are trying to save everybody out here. Good. And as we should. But stop assuming that people don't have the proper care just from what you see. And what you see might not be seven days a week. So let's stop assuming. What what do you need my help with? Okay. Am I wrong for feeling this way about this family? Am I taking it too far? Please help. Yes, you taking it too far. And yes and no, you you wrong about feeling this way about the family. I get it. I don't like noise neither. I don't really like a lot of noise. But let's just keep in mind, these are children. What do you expect children to do? They go outside in the backyard. They have a good time. They play. This is called child play. This is called being a child. So you have to respect that they are children. You were once one too. And I'm pretty sure you was just as noisy or maybe even noisier as a child. Let's just be for real. When people have backyards and they have children, they want their children to play in the backyard. They want their children to have a good time. So let's not, you know what I'm saying, be all on eggshells about the children making noise. Now she's talking about the kids are screaming, ma, stop, ma, stop, or please stop. We don't really know what's going on. Just because you hear them saying, ma, stop, doesn't mean that anything bad is going on. They could be having a good old time. She, they could be getting tickled. They could be getting chased around. They could be playing or laughing. You really don't know what's going on because you're not there. So yes, you are kind of taking it way too far. Learn to stay in your lane. Learn how to mind your business, okay? That's what I tell people all the time. Mind your fucking business because... Sometimes not minding your business will get you in a lot of shit. And when you get other people in trouble, they retaliate. And mind you, them kids could be going inside talking about, oh, the lady next door, she keeps asking us, do we eat today? And I'll tell you what, if that neighbor next door comes and knocks on your door and gives you a handful of fucking knuckle sandwiches or a verbal abuse to you, then you rightfully 
deserved it because you don't really know what's going on in that lady house stop assuming people stop wanting to be in other people's business like i'll be telling y'all i'll be trying to mind my business i do because i don't really give a fuck it's not that i don't give a fuck about my surroundings or what other people are doing because it's not my business as long as it's not harming me then it's not my business you know what i'm saying but if it's harming like a kid and i see it of course i'm gonna say something if it's harming a dog or animal of course i'm gonna say something cruelty but she doesn't even know she's like probably i assume they in the backyard yelling and they saying stop that doesn't mean they're abused. Remember, they go to school and the school is mandated child protection service reporters. So that is one. And if those children were in any way being neglected or harmed or abused, they would definitely be reported. And just because CPS didn't do anything on your part doesn't mean that anything or nothing was done. Let's just be for real. And if you really want to get to know that woman, then humble yourself. OK, go next door and ask her, do she need any type of help with something? How can you be of a neighbor to her? This is the part that people don't realize. Sometimes people be overwhelmed with shit. Having that many children is overwhelming. OK, like, let's get it for real. I have five kids. You know what I'm saying? So I know they, they may not be um, kids anymore, like little ones, but having a certain amount of kids is very overwhelming. So you really don't know what that lady is going through. But for you to be a neighbor that's nosy and talkative, you're starting to remind me of a Karen. That's what a Karen would do. OK, let's not have no Karens on my motherfucking channel. I don't really like Karens emailing me. That's one thing I don't like is Karens fucking emailing me. And I don't like people calling the law on people because they assume or because they don't like them or because they make noise. That could be a harmful to them and it could be harmful to you. OK, so, yes, mind your business and, and humble yourself, maybe knock on that door and say hello, introduce yourself and apologize for the altercation. And, you know, be neighborly because you never know that person could be in need of help. That person could be in need of just someone to talk to. Maybe you could be a mother figure to that person. I don't know. But let's humble ourselves and stop being nosy Nancy. OK, and bitter Becky and a Karen. Facts, straight up. How would y'all handle the situation? Because I know if somebody called motherfucking CPS on me, I'd be pissed the fuck off, all right? And if I found out that you was asking my children, did they eat today, and does your mama feed them, I'm knocking on your motherfucking door. Bitch, you better hope I don't kick your door in. That's how it would be. But I don't try to promote violence. I really don't. So on that note, we're going to end this. Leave your comments below. I hope you all have like a beautiful, blessed day. I will leave all the information down below for this amazing photo printer. Go get you one, girl, because I really do like this. Y'all see the quality of the pictures? Go get you one. I love stuff that's fun. This is fun. I thought this was really fun to use and super duper easy. Check out Goose Creek Candle, too. If you love candles, you love Bath and Body Works, then check out Goose Creek, girl. You will thank me later. And please donate to the Baby Registry if you haven't done so already. And if you have done so, thank you so much for all the love and support to me, my family, and my channel. And on that note, I love you guys. Have an amazing Wednesday, and I will see y'all in the next one.